Americans can do any better than our European parties and our South Africans and our Dutch and our whatever else we've got in the room. Yesterday at three o'clock, you can see my tweet. And you can see what I asked you to do with the tweet. I said there was gold bidders at 2304 and there was gold offers at 2313. And I asked you to make up your structures based on those bidders and offers. I then asked everybody in the room this morning what are the dealer's keys based on that structure. Give me the dealer's keys based on that structure. Can any of the guys that joined us for the American session please illuminate your European counterparts with a knowledge that seems to have passed them by by coming up with the dealer keys? Anybody that's just joined us in the US session can illuminate the European counterparts of what the dealer keys are from three o'clock. So this was interesting because Obviously, I thought we'd covered this entirely in classroom. I thought we'd covered this concept in classroom. I thought we'd discussed the Nash equilibrium. I thought we'd discussed the pricing of the marketplace. I thought we'd discussed all of that stuff. But it seems to be apparent that whereas we may have discussed it or may not have discussed it, the fact is that nobody remembers it. Nobody's remembered any of it. The dealer keys are these prices here. Yeah. So the dealer range is nine bucks, which means that we go nine bucks higher and nine bucks lower and then nine bucks lower and nine bucks lower and nine bucks higher. It's part of that pricing mechanism that we talk about, the dealer key. It's part of our Measured move concept. If you go from 213 to 204, and you go from 204 to 213, and you go from 213 to 204, if it breaks 204, you're going to go to 2295, aren't you? And then it's going to go 2295 to 2304, and so on and so on. This is what we mean by the dealer's keys. Now, this is based on implied volatilities coming from historical volatilities. This is a whole concept of dealer's keys, this idea of market structure. It may not be true. We don't care. It's a starting point for an analysis. But I want to show you something just about amazing. And it is, you know, this was really amazing because obviously it's been a while since we bothered to mention this because I thought everybody was doing this and I'm obviously wrong because nobody's doing this. But when I draw that chart in, what's obvious? It's obvious that the dealer key price is what we would call a low volume node. Yeah. Or the profile guys would call a low volume node. The other thing we know about low volume nodes from profile is the low volume node sometimes becomes the POC. So in other words, these prices at 311 yesterday, this price, this price, this price, this price, and this price is known to me in advance. These prices should either be low volume nodes, value area highs or value area lows, or POCs. You think it's possible? Do you think it's possible that that might be a thing? Let's take a look. Okay, I want to make sure you're, we, you know we're not cheating here. Are these prices here 
the same prices, 2322, 2313, 2304, 2295, and 2286. Are they on the screen from 3 o'clock yesterday? Yeah? Happy? So they're on the screen from 3 o'clock yesterday. So if you look at what happened from that point, now here's three o'clock here, right? So there's three o'clock at that point there. No, it's actually just after three. It doesn't make any difference. Take a look at where this morning's buy trade came from. Right? So let's take a look at this for a second. If you think there's anything in this concept of dealer's keys and all that kind of stuff, let me show you something that will blow your mind. When you start analyzing these areas, and you start looking into what's going on and you start dragging out your profile. And we're obviously going from the high of the profile, the low of the profile, the beginning of the profile. It actually doesn't make much of a difference. And I think we looked at it this morning about here. I think it was a wee bit later, actually. It must have been a wee bit later. Because we were in at eight o'clock, were we? So if you look at this now today, if we look at this today from yesterday's dealer key levels, take a look at what we find. We find the bottom edge was a dealer's key. We find the value area low was a dealer's key. We find the POC was a dealer's key. We find the value area high was the dealer's key price. And we find a low volume node was a dealer's key price. So let's just think about this. With an accuracy of about one point, the POC was a dealer's key, the value area low, the day session low, the value area high, and the low volume node were all dealer key prices. What? From a swing high to the swing low and back, the dealer key levels formed these really important levels going forward. Massively important levels. This is not in hindsight. You knew this information at three o'clock yesterday. So when I know this information yesterday, I'm looking at this and saying, one of these prices will probably be a POC. One of these, all the rest of these prices will probably be rejection prices of some description. So I'm looking for those rejections, short term rejections of these price levels. So when I see an opportunity to buy off that price level and then buy off this price level and then sell off this price level here and then buy maybe off this price level. And do you see where the sales just came in? See it? You see where the sale just came in? And we come off that uh, profile there and we bring it the profile now up to date to the last swing low. So we can bring that profile into the last swing low there and we can start looking at it from the brand new profile. And we bring it up to the current swing high there and we look at how it's now forming. Because obviously the things change, narratives change, the swings change, the, narr the underlying narrative, but we've got to start somewhere. And this is how we start recognizing concepts like dealer's keys. So when I look at this now, you can say, well, from the swing low to the swing high, dealer's keys should all be low volume nodes or POCs. So I can restart this if I wanted to, right? 
I could go into that and say, well, I'm going to do that exercise. I'm going to start looking at this from a from a profile point of view. And I'm going to go from swing low to swing high. I'm going to go from the low price here to the high price here. I want to see where the dealers are dealing. And the first thing that I can recognize almost immediately is, of course, the POC price. And I can recognize the POC. I can recognize this very low volume node for that value area low there. And I can recognize a very low volume node for the value area high here. Now, they're obviously skewed. But what I'm now trying to do is I'm trying to establish some consistency. So if I look at that price and I look at that price, look at where that finds the bottom edge. So it looks like this is currently what the dealers are using for their dealer skew, their dealer uh, spreads, isn't it? It looks as if the spread is extended a little bit. So I'm not going to use that POC price. Because inside of the dealer spread, there's obviously the mid price. So when we know that there's always a mid price, then I'm going to be more inclined to use this price as my mid price area. And I'm going to look at that as a possible dealer spread there. That looks more likely to be the current dealer spread. And if that's the current dealer spread, we can now make those extensions. So I can look at that there and say, well, we could obviously go ahead and draw in the higher dealer spreads. And guess what price that found? Almost the perfect top edge. Almost, and it's obviously you're getting that idea that it's close, but it's maybe not quite close enough. But it still gives you this ability to start thinking about how the market makers chop up the market in terms of rotations. Do you all remember the classroom we did about the treasury bond, the, the ZB contract that they chop up the market in eight tick increments? The ZB. Not the UB, the UB is more 11, 12 tick increments, but the ZB about eight tick increments. Well, it's the same concept. It does change. It does change and it looks, you look inside these areas and when you start looking inside these areas, you start referencing these price levels, these dealer key levels. And what do you start referencing inside the dealer keys? Volume. If the dealers are gonna do something in and around these areas, we would imagine it's going to be accompanied by a surge in volume. So we bring in volume and we see whether the dealer's key has a surge in volume, yes or no. Does any of the dealer key levels have surges in volume? Any of them? Sure. That seems to have a surge in volume. That seems to have a surge in volume. And this seems to have a surge in volume at the top edge, isn't it? And then at that price, surge in volume. Surge in volume, right? And all of a sudden, you're starting to recognize stuff. All of a sudden, you see this buy side imbalance here. And you're thinking to yourself, I'm off to the higher dealer's key. And then you see this buy side imbalance here. And you say, I'm off to the higher dealer's key. Because you've got a failed auction here. You've got a buy side imbalance. And you rolled all the way to the next dealer's key price. And then you've got a Frightener candle. And then you got a buy side imbalance here and it rolled off a failed auction all the way through to the next dealer's key. And this stuff's all known to us. You know, by doing, going into our market structural elements and thinking about these Nash equilibriums or dealer's keys, we start coming out with this type of stuff, this type of analysis, this type of information. And this is when we start cross-referencing against things like the supply demand. If we take a look at this and we cross-reference cross this with supply and demand, which should also be dealer's keys. Yeah, we should also be dealer's keys, do you agree? We start recognizing some stuff.
trading view is not uh, catching up here, so I don't think we'll recognize anything. Ho oh, hum. Yeah, there we go. You start recognizing the dealer keys in and around these areas. Now, obviously, for whatever reason, it's not found that because it doesn't have the two sigma on it, but that should have found a, that should have been looking for that balance, right? Because it's got a measured move attached to this. It finds that retest here and it finds that retest there. So you see these supply lines coming in at dealer key levels. So this helps us to identify what the current dealer key is. If I've got supply at this price and I've got demand at this price, well, there's going to be the same thing, isn't it? There's, the structure is the same. If that's demand there and that's supply there, well, that means that we're going to be looking at that as a structural element, which means there's likely to be a buy down here as well. Because that's what measure moves do. That's what structure does. It doesn't mean I'm a buyer here. It means that the market maker will probably at least do a bit of buying here to balance up, to aggregate any exposures, and possibly, if it agrees with a net value change, to get short into this or get long into this, right? This is what we talk about when we talk about knowledge, general background market knowledge, the ability to not be a one-trick pony, but instead to be looking at lots of things happening simultaneously. Because the markets are not one-dimensional, they're multi-dimensional. There's lots of different things that can cause the market to go up or down at any single point in time. If we're not switched on enough to see that, we're going to sometimes miss out on some amazing tradable opportunities.